Now, if your symptoms are not responding to bladder installations or oral meds, odds are your doctor is going to suggest some neuromodulation to you. This means that they're going to use a mild electronic impulse to kind of re-regulate, normalize those nerves to drive your symptoms of frequency urgency. Now, it's important that you know that these are not approved specifically for interstitial cystitis, uh, nor is it considered to be particularly helpful with pain, but they have changed the lives of patients who are struggling with incontinence and or frequency and urgency. Now, there are two different forms of neuromodulation. One is surgical, the other is non-surgical. So let's start with the non-surgical one first. Non-surgical means that they're going to use an acupuncture needle as a vector to the nerve. This is called urgent PC or post-tibial nerve stimulation. So they'll just place an acupuncture about above the ankle bone on the inside of the leg. They'll attach a TENS unit to it. They'll deliver a mild electronic impulse uh, 30 minutes uh, once a week for a good 10 weeks to see if that's helpful. I will share that I was one of the early, early recipients of this form of neuromodulation. And I, I, it wasn't immediately helpful, but I do feel that it broke me out of a fairly painful flare. I had my first two hours without pain at week four. I had my first day without pain at week seven. Didn't fix everything because of course now we know I'm pelvic floor driven, but it was, it was mo modestly helpful to me personally. Now the advantage of this type of modulation is that there's no surgery involved, nor are there any significant adverse events. In contrast to our surgical form of sacral neuromodulation or pudendal neuromodulation, known under the brand name Interstim, and I do think that there's another company that's offering this as well. So in this case, what they do is they perform a minor surgery to implant electrodes down by your sacrum, and then they'll attach a generator to it. So you have wires sticking out of your back. You'll wear a generator on a belt for a week or two, uh, and it will deliver that mild impulse. And it will, you, you use that trial period to see if it's helpful. If it's not helpful, you stop, they take the leads out. If it is helpful, they might then suggest going to the permanent implant where they also implant the generator in your upper buttock area. Now, there are a number of adverse events associated with surgical neuromodulation. Um, and there is a specific database at the US FDA that is publicly available. It is called the MOD database. And you can go over to the MOD database, that's M-A-U-D-E, search for Interstem, and you get to look directly at the type of experiences that other patients have gone through. We, we see a lot of infections, a lot of shocking sensations, devices not working. Um, and even, I, I hate to say it, but there are a couple of fatalities associated with InterSTEM. Unfortunately, the challenge with this, with this database and the FDA in general is that they don't provide follow-up, so we don't really know what happened. Um, you have to have a very good discussion with your doctor about pros and cons. What type of adverse events have they experienced? How did they address that adverse event? How many units have they done? Because you really want a very, very experienced doctor doing this procedure. Couple of other issues that you need to think about. Number one, cost. Um, always, always, always get in writing from your insurance company that it is covered by your insurance. Why do I say that? Because we had a patient who talked to the billing office or the doctor's office, they told her it was covered. She called her insurance company, they told her it was covered. She called the hospital billing office where the procedure was done, they told her it was covered. A week after she had it done, bam, she got a massive bill because miraculously it wasn't covered and they were all wrong. So always, always, always get that in writing. Concept number two is do you keep the device if it's not working? Now, the challenge with having any metal in placed in your body is it can make it very difficult to have MRIs. So if you're in a car accident, for example, and you have metal in your body, they might not be able to do this very important diagnostic procedure to make sure that you're, you're okay. Um, some of the, the newer inner stems are apparently MRI safe, but it does bring up a very important question. If the device isn't working, do you just turn it off and leave it there or should you have it removed? Our challenge is that the insurance company 
some insurance companies sometimes won't pay for the removal uh, unless it's malfunctioning. So this again is a really good question for your doctor. Hey doc, if it doesn't work after a year or two, are we going to take it out? What do you normally do with that? Another important question is will your doctor care for you if you lose your health insurance? And if they say no, I would be very cautious about that. I mean, it, it's worth calling a company and saying, all right, who else can provide care for me? See, there's, it takes a lot of thought, my friends. This is not something you should jump into, the, into lightly. Questions you can ask your doctor. What are the pros and cons of having neuromodulation? What type of neuromodulation do you recommend, surgical or non-surgical? What symptoms will it treat? What complications have you seen in your practice from this device? Were you able to successfully resolve those complications? How many have you performed? If I suffer from a complication, what should I do? At what point would you recommend removal of my device? If I want it removed, will you remove it? Is it covered by my insurance? Get that in writing from your insurance company. Will you provide care for me if I lose my health insurance? And if not, then who would I see if I have a problem? Take home summary. Neuromodulation may be offered to patients who have not responded to other therapies. It requires thoughtful consideration and research don't rush into it. Neuromodulation is not approved as a treatment for IC. It is approved for frequency, urgency, and incontinence. Neuromodulation may be ineffective for pain. There are two types, surgical and non-surgical. Non-surgical urgent PC is done at the ankle with an acupuncture needle and has few adverse events. Ten weekly treatments are usually performed. Surgical interstim requires surgery to implant leads near the nerves. If successful, a second surgery will implant the generator device. Adverse events are more common. Review the MOD database at FDA.gov for more info. I see patients are more likely to request explants or report that their symptoms are returned. Sacral neuromodulation requires constant monitoring and may require multiple surgeries over time. If you're looking for any other information, come on over to the IC Network website, icnetwork.org.